Here are some tips to help you get started on these proofs about open sets and closed sets. On the first of these two proofs, you're asked to show that the intersection of two sets that are open is itself an open set. So if U1 and U2 are open, then so is their intersection. So one way of setting up this proof, anytime we're dealing with a proof regarding open sets, is that we have to take it down to the level of points. So in other words, we need to turn this from a proof about sets to a proof about points, specifically interior points. So the setup is that if we're trying to prove that the intersection is an open set, what we need to prove is that every point of that intersection is an interior point, namely an interior point of that intersection. So your proof will start by selecting an arbitrary point in the intersection. Let x be an element of u1 intersect u2. And remember then what you need to show is that x can stretch out its arms to some length, and those arms will remain completely within the set, namely the intersection u1 intersect u2. So you need to show that there exists a c greater than 0, such that the open interval from x minus c to x plus c is a subset of u1 intersect u2. So your job of your proof is to construct that c. How do you do it? You're going to have to use the fact that you know that u1 and u2 are themselves open sets. So every point of u1 is interior to u1, and every point of u2 is interior to u2. If you can connect those two things together, you can produce a C that will show that this X is interior to the intersection. In the second of these proofs, uh, we have what I think of as the most fundamental result in elementary topology, which is that sets are opened if and only if their complement is closed. And here, we understand open by the interior points definition, and we understand closed by the accumulation points definition. Uh, and the accumulation points definition, because it's so challenging to work with, the result of this theorem is going to let us have a whole new take on what closed means uh, that doesn't rely on us working with that uh, challenging uh, accumulation point definition. But we have two things to prove, because this is an if and only if statement. So let's talk a little bit about how you might set up each of these directions. For the forward direction, we can assume that u is an open set so that every point inside u is an interior point of u. We then need to show that the complement r minus u is a closed set. So that means that we need to show that every accumulation point of the complement r minus u belongs to the set r minus u. So how do we do that? Well, we need to start by picking an accumulation point of r minus u. So let's call that accumulation point y. Well, the issue here is that there are two different cases. On the one hand, y might be an element of the complement r minus u, call that case 1. But in that case, there's nothing for us to prove, right? because then y already belongs to r minus u. So the interesting case is the case where we pick y such that it's not in r minus u. Right? And so what we'd like to say is that then y must, um, if, if r minus u is a closed set, then y needs to belong to r minus u. So if y doesn't belong to r minus u, we're going to arrive at some kind of a contradiction. But how we can do that is by observing that since y doesn't belong to r minus u, that means that y belongs to u. And we happen to know something about the set u, namely that it's an open set. So then the task here is to show that y cannot in fact be an accumulation point of r minus u using the fact that y belongs to u, which is an open set. So there's the, the logic for you to fill in. Meanwhile, coming in the back, the backward implication requires us to show that if r minus u is a closed set, so we're going to start by assuming the complement of u is closed, we want to show that that makes u an open set. So because what we want to show is that u is open, we should start with a point of u, an arbitrarily chosen point, and our goal is to then show that this arbitrarily chosen point of u is an interior point of u. So how are we going to show that x is an interior point of u? Well this I think it's easier to do by contradiction. So let's assume that x is not an interior point and then we'll arrive at some kind of a contradictory statement. How might we do that? Well this is a little challenging to work with. Uh, if x is not an interior point that means that any distance by which we stretch our arms out from x, so for all values of c, the interval from x minus c to x plus c, the open interval, is not a subset of u. And what that means is that it must contain some point which is outside of the set u. So there must exist a point, which I'm going to call here x sub c, uh, that belongs to that open interval, 
but which doesn't belong to the set U. So it's outside of the red set, it's somewhere in the blue. Right? And so what we can then show is that because this is true for all values of C, for all amounts that I can stretch my arms out, maybe we can show that that implies that X is in fact an accumulation point of the complement, R minus U. But if X is an accumulation point of R minus U, and we know that R minus U is a closed set, that means, because closed implies that all of its accumulation points belong to it, that would have to imply that X belongs to R minus U, which would be a contradiction to our construction that has X belong to you. So here, the logic for you to fill in is why in the assumption that uh, X belongs to you, but that X is not an interior point, that that assumption leads to the contradiction um, that X is an accumulation point to the complement. So if you can fill in the logic in the gray areas on this slide, then you've supplied a proof, uh, one version of a proof for this theorem. Good luck.